Today we're going to be talking about this little box here. However, before we jump into the main video, I just want to say you may find some of the audio in this video is distorted. Unfortunately, at the point of recording, I hadn't noticed that my Rode Wireless Go had changed its settings, and it was only when I got to post that I could hear that something wasn't right. There is nothing more I can do about it at this point in time, but I did want to make you guys aware of it up front before you guys mentioned it in the comments. Anyway, let's get on with the video and let's take a look at what this is all about. Today we're going to be taking a look at this little box here and what's contained in this little box is an SF45 scanning LiDAR. If you don't know what that is, it is a small scanning LiDAR from Lightway that is designed to be used in robotics, drones and any application where you need a small lightweight scanning LiDAR to do things like object sensing and object avoidance or anything else that you might need a small LiDAR for. In today's video, we're going to take a closer look at the device itself, walk you through some of its features and capabilities, show you it in action, both on the software that they supply, as well as setting it up on Ardrapilot on the bench. And then at the end, I'll show you some video of this in use. Just before we jump into taking a closer look, I just want to say if you're interested in getting yourself one of these or anything else for your drone or aircraft, they're available from 3 DXR in the UK. They very kindly lent us this one to be able to make this video. And if you're after anything for your Ardra Pilot build or anything to build yourself a plane or drone, please do check them out because they stock everything from the Cube Autopilot through to Healing and things like these LiDARs as well. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the device itself and then I'll walk you through some of its features and capabilities and then let's take a look at it in use. Okay, so first of all, taking a look at what you get. When you open the box, you get a little card inside which asks you about registering the warranty and there's a QR code on that and asking you to register it within seven days. We have a USB cable for connecting it up to our computer for updating the firmware as well as using it with the software. We have some fixings, which are the fixings for able to bolt the device down. We have our connection cables for whatever we want to connect it to because we've got a USB as well as sort of UARTs and I2C on the bottom as well. And that's the cable for that. And then obviously in the box, we have the actual LiDAR itself. Now this is a scanning LiDAR. So as I said, it has the ability to rotate and actually scan the area that you want to actually sense any objects in. Looking around, we obviously have our lasers up here on the back. There is a micro USB port and then on the bottom you've got that connection port with that harness for the IO for connecting it up to your device. Taking a closer look at the spec, the device weighs 59 grams and is 51 by 48 by 44 mil in size. It has a range of up to 50 meters on the LiDAR and a measurement rate of 50 hertz to 5 thousand hertz. The device is capable of scanning from 20 degrees to 320 degrees on the rotation and has an adjustable sweep speed of up to five sweeps per second. Power wise, it supports 4.5 volt to 5.5 volt and uses about 300 milliamps of current. And IO wise, it has a serial and I2C input alongside that micro USB. The next thing we're going to do is get this connected up to USB and walk you through some of the features of the software that's available. Now this you can download from Lightway's website and it allows you to test the device and demonstrate it and check it's doing what it should be doing. Before I do this though, I need to put this box between this and the camera because there is the possibility that the laser on this could damage the sensor on my camera. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put that there and I'm going to try and use the overhead to show you what's going on rather than actually show it on the main camera because I don't want to destroy my sensor, basically. So what we're going to do is plug in the USB port into the LiDAR itself. We're then going to plug the USB in and wait for it to kick in and then hopping over to the desktop. So on the software, you can see that it has now picked up that the light wave is detected. So I'm going to click enter this and in here we can do the configuration. We can upgrade the firmware, but we can also see the scanning output as well. So via the app, we've got the info screen, which tells us about the device itself. We've then got the upgrade, the external and internal firmware, which is the module as well as the scanning part. And you've then got the scan output. And this will actually give us a graphical representation of what the LiDAR is actually seeing 
seeing right now. So for instance, if I zoom in, you can see this is what it is actually picking up in the room at this moment in time. So for instance, if I just put my uh, hands around the LiDAR and scan in, you will see that it cups around and that is actually the points that are being picked up as my hands are cupped around it. And then you can see how close they are as I move them in closer. Literally my hands are right around it now and you can see all the points. And then if I put my hands out further, you can see that extend out as well. Just to show you that on the overhead. So I've got my hands like that. Or I can move my hands out and that changes how it's represented on the screen as well. If I just take my hands away, you can see it's now scanning out to the rest of the room, but it's not really showing much at this moment in time. And that's because we've only got it set at a low level of points. What we can do is go down here and set the points. So for instance, we can go drop it right down to that, which is 50 or right up to 5,000. That gives much more accuracy within the data in the sense of it's far more points being transmitted and picked up compared to what we had before. And again, if I cut my hands around it, you can see now that's a very different look compared to going full out. We can then increase or decrease the speed as well. So for instance, we're on five. I could set it down to 20 if I wanted to, and that would slow the speed of the LiDAR right down. As you can see there, again, putting you on the overhead, you can see it turning there and it is much slower than it was just now. And then going back to the desktop view, you can see it scanning again there. And if I just let it scan right out, you can see it's picking up everything. And what this here is, this bit here is the actual box being picked up that I've got between it and the camera. So for instance, if I move that out a bit further, you can see that it moves or if I move it in closer, it will move in closer to the LiDAR as well. And again, if I set it back to five, you'll see the speed increase and that will change what it's actually picking up. Now at the moment, I'm sitting right next to the LiDAR and what you can see here is actually me. That is my body being detected by the unit. If I now move out away from it, you can see that actually extend out. I'm just going backwards, 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 and you can see that then extend away from the LiDAR itself. And whilst it's still picking me up because I'm actually still before the wall, you can see that it is actually moving away. And if I now stand up and move around to the side and you can see me shifting around, or if I move over to this side, you can see on the LiDAR display that I'm actually affecting it. And then if I come and stand right in front of it, you can see that it moves right in and you can see that it is being affected there as it's doing the scanning. And again, you can see me scrolling in as I come in close. And if I just kept my hands around it now, you can see if I scroll in a lot closer, you can see that's my hands there being cupped and then I move them away and it's scanned out. Now in here isn't the best environment to demonstrate this in use. What I've been able to show you is some of the points being picked up and everything. However, this isn't the best place. It needs to be in an environment where it's able to scan out and really show objects changing compared to a room like this, which is cluttered with stuff everywhere. What I'm gonna do now is hop it onto an autopilot and just show you it on Mission Planner to show you what you can also see on that. And then we'll take a look at a video of it in use on Ardra Pilot with the guy showing you the kind of stuff that you can do with a device like this. Okay, so just to show you this on Ardra Pilot and Mission Planner, I've currently got the LiDAR connected to a cube orange. I know it's gold, but it is a cube orange spec. And I've got Ardra Pilot installed and I've got the LiDAR connected on UART 2. Just to show you on the overhead, you can see that the UART is plugged into number two and the LiDAR is connected and it's on some temporary wiring basically at the moment, but it's all plugged in, connected 
as it should be. Now, to set these up, you need to follow the instructions that is listed on the Ardra Pilot website, and they do have a specific page for this LiDAR already. You can see it's the Lightwear SF45, and we've got everything here listed, so it shows us the wiring that we need, as well as the settings for our relevant serial port. I have got it on serial two, so my serial two protocol is 11, serial two board is 115, and then I've set everything else as it needs to be. If we hop over to Mission Planner, we are connected on the autopilot. And if I control F and click on this and click on proximity, you can see the proximity display has kicked in. And if I just make it bigger, you can see that it is connected and working and it is actually detecting the objects and me as the LiDAR is moving around. Now, if I just actually move in front of the LiDAR a second. So what I'm going to do is rotate the LiDAR so it is now actually in the right direction. So where in front of me is in front of the LiDAR. So I've just done that. And it is now detecting this top part here as the furthest part of the room. And if I now move my hand in front of that, you'll see that that will be detected as I move my hand closer and you can see that there it's now detecting something there and if I move my hand away you can see that it's come right out and that's what it's detecting and again if I move further back you can see what it is sensing is completely changed so it's got a much bigger feel for the room than it had before. And this is what allows it then to actually detect the objects whilst using it in our Pilot Emission Planner. Next, I'm going to show you this LiDAR out and about. I've set it up on my Ardra Pilot based rover, and I'm using this on a Cube Black on Ardra rover. And then I've got that connected up to a Healing ground station that allows me to do the communication and telemetry. Okay, so I'm just out and about with the rover and I've got it set up over there and I'm just going to demonstrate the LiDAR in action. Now I've got basic object avoidance set up, which is scanning and I don't know if you can quite see it from there, but the little LiDAR is rotating on the top. Now what I'm going to just show you is some of its behaviour when I use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is walk towards it. So if I just walk towards the rover, you'll see that it will begin to detect me and it will actually start backing up automatically because I've come within the range of the LiDAR I'm holding the remote out to the side and it's not doing anything and if I move out the way it will actually then stop now if I bring it forward and start actually bringing it towards me and if I stop here you will see the rover will actually come to a stop itself and it won't let me bring any further and it actually backs up a little bit and again if I step out of the way I'm holding the throttle forward you can see that it is moving and then if I walk into the path, you'll see it will actually back up automatically away from me to try and maintain the distance. Now I've set it to two meters. So again, if I walk towards it, it'll try to maintain that two meters distance at all times with it detecting me. Now, if I move to the side, it is still two meters. So if I move to the side, actually, let me just come over here. I'm not quite sure how much I'm in view there. Let me just come back over here. But again, if I just take, come out of the range and walk again towards it, you'll see the rover will actually begin to move away to keep that two meters distance. And again, as I pass, it will then allow me to continue to drive it forward from there. Now, if I just come back over to here, again, you can see I'm standing here, bringing it towards me. And it's again now stopped and pushed itself backwards because it doesn't want me to be in the way. And again, if I walk towards it, you can see that. And if I walk to the side, because I'm within that range, it'll actually speed up and move away from me quite fast. But again, if I go around the back of it, just moving around here, you saw it actually moved away from me because I'm at the side and I'm within the range that it's picking up. It's wanting to keep me at that two meters distance so I can actually walk with it and it will just continue to keep moving to keep me out of the range and if I come to the side it's trying to decide which way to go and if I actually go stay there it suddenly changes direction and moves backwards out of the way hopping around here 
And again, I'm to the side, it's coming back towards. And if I suddenly go, you know what? No, I'm gonna go there. It moves away. So it is very, very clever in the sense of how the Ardra Pilot object system picks it up, but not only that, how that LiDAR is then used, and whether it be copter or rover application, it allows you to do some really, really cool stuff. And then you've got the advanced features in Ardra Pilot, like Bendy Ruler and the others when you're using it on a mission. Just to show you this in action in real world conditions, Randy, one of the Andre Pilot devs, has a video on this and it is the same LiDAR setup. So if I hit play and you'll actually see it doing the object avoidance here on the copter. So you can see he was flying it towards the hedge and you can see that it's picking it up and it just won't fly any further. If you've used object avoidance on any other systems, it's exactly the same, and it is simply choosing to stop before it actually hits the object as he's flying it towards the trees. Again, it's one of those things you can see that it's rotating on the bottom of the LiDAR there, just below the frame. You can see that it's located just by there, and that's it actually doing the sensing, and then, what he's going to do is get in front of it and start waving things around, I think, is what he does now. You can see he's walking towards it with an object and the copter's actually moving away as it actually picks up the stick being shown to the aircraft. And again, he's walking towards it, it's detecting the object and then moving the copter out of the way. And again, this LiDAR means it can do that and scan it around it and not just in front of it. So again, he's moved to the side and it's again picking that up and moving away as well, rather than it just doing it like on a fixed LiDAR with it being around the front. So it does open up a whole world of possibilities and this isn't vision-based sensing, this is LiDAR-based sensing, so it does have better performance in some ways because it is definitely picking up objects rather than having to actually sense the object through vision system and then try and determine if it's an issue or not. Whereas with the LiDAR, it's a, just like a black and white decision. Yes, there's something there. Yes, react to it via the Andre Pilot software. And that is pretty much it for this video. As you've seen, these are extremely interesting sensors. There is a whole world of things that you can do with these that I have not touched on today. You can do all sorts around object sensing, object avoidance, and there's more and more features being put into Andre Pilot all of the time for sensors like this. If you are interested in getting yourself a LiDAR on one of these devices, please do check out 3DXR's website. I'll put a link to them in the description. These are available from them, but you can also get anything else you need as well. Big thank you to Ben at 3DXR for lending us this one. This was very interesting to take a look at. I've been playing with it in the workshop and a little bit out and about as well and there's some real cool stuff with these too. I would love to get one of these permanently on the rover however here and now that isn't possible but let's just see how things develop in the future. Anyway that's it from me if you found this video interesting please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links to our Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. And if you have any questions or anything else, do put them in the comment section or come over and check out my Discord server and I'll try to answer any questions you may have there too.